This is John Walton, and you're listening to the Power Play Point Podcast with the Blue Lighter on Point and Anna Knox. Here's Wilson, and on the right circle, they score! Welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. This is your host, the Blue Liner on Point, talking to you live to tape from my humble abode in beautiful downtown Glen Burnie, Maryland. And, ooh, yeah, how about this weather, eh? Uh, Snow last week and damn near spring this week, only in the DMV. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Um, And uh, with me, as always, is my beautiful, wonderful co-host, talking to you also live to tape from centerville virginia also happens to be in the dmv it is the one and only mermaid anna knox Mm, happy saturday girl happy saturday yes yes we are coming to you as anna just pointed out uh live to tape saturday evening um this uh we're hot off the most recent game uh it's actually uh about 20 after five uh after the game against dallas which unfortunately ended in an ot loss but um love love the last minute effort we'll talk about that later um so uh but can we just talk about the weather yesterday be my guest (laughs) i mean my god so we had a teacher work day it's in the quarter and we were able to like you know they gift us this uh oh you can uh work from a remote location Mm -hmm. so really you know we're all like so we're working from home (laughs) um it was gorgeous out I mean, I had the windows open. I was, I could not have been happier. I, I mean, I know like when it's gloomy, like it is right now, it's depressing. I need, I need that vitamin D to come in. And and so it was, I don't know. But then of course, like then today, you know, it's like meh weather and going to rain tonight and carry into tomorrow. So there we go. Although I will say I was glad to watch hockey today with this weather versus if it was on yesterday for the Cavs. That would totally, have been a little hard for me. Totally get that. Yeah, I, I think uh, schools have the same mentality. Uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of tired of winter, so let's have a professional day. Or, or in the case of my school, um, it was uh, parent-teacher conferences. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty – Friday was, uh, yeah, pretty damn quiet uh, in, in the dungeon that, that uh, I work out of. Um, and yeah, no, no, you like the guy in the, in the office, uh, well, the movie, um, oh, I'm, office nope. space do, 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 with the guy with the, the stapler and the, the, <laughs> the, the, locked in the back. And the, the stapler. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Him. No, I'm not like that, but, uh, no, no window in my office. Unfortunately, I got to walk out yeah. in the hallway to, to see daylight, but yeah. So nothing so like I have that. I a but... windowless classroom. Did I ever tell you that? No. Yeah. Well, it's more like, I, don't even, I can't even really consider it a classroom because of uh, the students that I, you know, um, I pull out to to help, you know, with um, academic and behavioral needs. And uh, yeah, there is no window. So my kids are exposed to a huge tapestry on my, on one wall that says good vibes only, because as they come in, I'm like, mm-hmm, check yourself. Don't, don't come in here being all crazy. And then the other is all, like all my cap stuff and, and my Tommies and all that nice. stuff. So, and then, and then of course I've got like mermaid stuff. So they're like, yeah. so let me get this straight. Like you want the good vibes. We get that. You love hockey, which is like a winter sport, but you kind of wish you were in the ocean and you like mermaids. <laughs> yep. I'm like, and, and that that just sums me up. Like I I am not there nothing clear cut here. Just it, it is who I am. So it is funny, but I'm like, if I don't have a window in my classroom, I've got to make it look so, somewhat appealing. <laughs> lots of yin, uh, lots of yang. Yeah. 
<laughs> Definitely. Check yourself. <laughs> yeah, but very much so. I, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, I totally get it. I'm um, I'm I'm definitely down with that. Um, so uh, before we get too far into things, though, um, yep. we have we have a guest on with us. I have a very yep. special guest on with us this week. Um, he is a, a Caps fan, of course. Um, and uh, so we're going to give him the talk show treatment. Bring him on right now and uh, let him tell his story about being a Caps fan. Uh, so, Mr. Troy Evans, come on the show with us. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. Good. Awesome. Welcome, awesome to Troy. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Power Play Point podcast. Uh, where are you calling us from? Elkton, Virginia. Uh, did you say Elkton? Yeah. Okay, Elkton. Um, I, I know. know I, I know, know of an. Hold on. I I know of an Elkton, Maryland. Where, where's Elkton in Virginia? Pardon my ignorance. I see on the screen it says Harrisonburg, so I wasn't sure if that was. Yeah, but... I, I know where Harrisonburg is. Yeah, it's near Harrisonburg. Okay. 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 Yeah, I, I definitely know where where that is. That's uh, that's out out west. I know uh, it's a big college town. So that yeah. that's cool. That that's cool. Um, okay. So, and, uh, as we always ask, uh, what, what do you do for the almighty paycheck? Uh, what do you do for the, for, for a living? Um, I volunteer doing meals on wheels. I love that. Nice. Always That's really fantastic. Always, always great. Always great to, uh, see somebody serving the community. So uh, we salute you, sir, for that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, uh, so is that like you do that, uh, um, just weekdays or all through the week? I do it three days a week. Mm -hmm. Monday, and, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. And and do you serve uh, all the communities in and around Harrisonburg and Elkton? No, we take it to their house and drop it off. Okay. Okay. But that's 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 all all around where, where you live though. You don't have to go yeah. like go okay. Okay, cool. Um yeah. Yeah, that that's awesome. That's totally awesome to hear. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, all right, so uh, here's the big one. Um, so you're a Caps fan, obviously. How did you get started being a Caps fan? I actually went. I actually watched it with my dad growing up. Oh, oh fun! Nice. So, so okay. The, now, well, we're not we're not going to ask you to give your age, but about <laughs> how long ago was that? I have. I actually don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Well, it, 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 I I don't feel bad because uh, I I remember watching watching games uh, way back when um, a guy by the name of Ivan Lebray was the captain, and um, I'm definitely dating myself. That's, You're that's old. Going, that's going back about <laughs> oh forty six years at least to give you an idea of how old I am. Um, but um, yeah, okay. So would you say uh, so easily back towards like the eighties? So, so maybe back, the eighties. Uh, back when only the goalie was the goalie. Oh, yep, yep. Nice. I remember them. I remember them days. I remember those days for sure. Yeah, Oli, Oli was a big part in turning turning the team around. Um, the the nineties they were kind of. Uh, hitting the low point, even though they hit the conference championship. But uh, yeah, when Ole started playing, he and he took over, um, and it was it was good times for them. He took over in '98 as as the number one goalie, and he he led them all the way to the finals that year. They didn't win it, but uh, they you know ever mm -hmm. ever since he took over, they turned it around. So yeah, I definitely remember those days. Um, so who would you say? Um, from then on, all the way on, is is your favorite player? Ovi. Ovi yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Popular choice. Um, now, what what do you think? Now, I I kind of hate to put you on the spot, but what do you think? Well, since uh, he's okay, I don't want to say he's struggling, but you know, obviously yes. he's not. Uh, well, I mean, he's not. He's not tearing down the gates. He's not probably not going to, you know, get, be another 40, 50 goal season for him. But, you know, I mean, what, what do you think with, with uh, how he's doing this year so far? He's struggling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would agree. Um, uh, do, do you think he's going to turn it around or is this going to be the whole year for, is, is it going to be? He's going to turn it around. 
All right. That's what I, I like so to hear. Too. I think so too. I'm I'm with you there. Uh and I think part of that we've been seeing the last couple of weeks. I don't and he's been playing bad. He's just not he's not scoring goals like what we used what we're used to seeing, but he's it's not like he's playing horribly. Right. You know. And he's so. still oh my gosh, like his stats are are great out of the you know, the goal column. When, um in regards to we know that he's He's not giving up on the team. He's there. He's going to, you know, continue to to try to lead them. We can tell by his body language that he is frustrated with himself. And today, that bullet was fantastic. And I really hope he just watches that over and over and over again to know that we're all there for him. We're just as excited that he scored as Strom and, you know, and, and Mantha. And it's just like, yes, let's just let's just keep it going. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I, I I, just, I, I feel like he's like right there on the edge of turning it around. I really mm-hmm. do. Um, so maybe the yeah. all-star break. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe that'll give, I'll give him a, give him, give him some time. Um, okay. And uh, okay. So we're going to talk more about this when we're done with the recaps, but Troy, I understand um, you are also an athlete. Uh, with the uh, Special Olympics. So um, can can you just give us real quick, uh, what events do you, co- or event do you compete in there? I, I compete in basketball, softball, volleyball, and bowling. Wow. That's fantastic. That is, I'll tell you what, that that's way more than I can ever say that I've done. <laughs> I The most I've ever done, I played intramural floor hockey in my college. So already you got you got me beat for sure and 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 anna's anna's as, as we've mentioned so many times coaches youth swimming so right. you're, you're you're both up on me for for damn sure but try of all those what's your favorite um bowling i love bowling yes that's so cool i love uh, that i got so i i gotta ask troy uh so what what's your what's your average score my average is a 130 one thirty, and not bad. That's not bad My at all. Average is like is a thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just have, I, I get very competitive, so I'm, yeah. I'm you know, I do when I do get you? on. <laughs> um, but I've always, yeah, and I just, I, I think it's such a, it's a fun sport, it, but it can frustrate the heck out of you. God, I haven't, I haven't bowled since college. I can't. I know. I can't even, well, I that's can't the remember. thing that's so great about it. Okay, Gail. So. We're thinking of all these birthday ideas coming up. Maybe we need to go bowling too. <laughs> well, that I, I I kind of feel like that's like a spring thing, spring or summer thing. If we that's do that, true. so and our local bowling alley was so cool because they used to, um, like we had a couple of the kids' birthday parties there, and they give you this huge um, pin, and uh, all the kids could sign it, and then the adults got um, huge beers in the shape of bowling pins. I was like, how can you go wrong with the sport? I mean, it's it's brilliant. Um, but I don't think they do that anymore. Cool. I enjoyed it. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I think it actually made me a better bowler. So <laughs> that's oh, good. Yep. Anywho, All sorry. Right. All right. No, no, no. Uh, you learn something new every week on this podcast. That's for damn sure. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and get into the on ice action for the Caps. Um, all right. No sense sugarcoating it. It wasn't all that great a week. Uh, three games played, three games. Um, well, two two technically in the loss column, one in, in the other loss column. Yeah. Um, I think it ended well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make the, you know, today's game, the feature game, but um, let's go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off and talk about the first two games. Um, so the one was, the first one was this past um, Tuesday in Minnesota against the Wild. And um, I think a lot of us, because of how badly the Wild have done this year, kind of had this as not automatically necessary, but uh, as, as a win or a potential win for the caps. Yeah, that, that didn't happen. Yeah, that did not happen. Um, so the goal breakdown, um, wow. Stop me. If you've heard this before, not even two minutes into the game, Brock Faber 
uh, scores his fourth. Zuccarello and Rossi on the assist in that one. One nothing Minnesota. Um, three minutes later, almost to the exact, Marcus Foligno, his eighth, Boldy and Erickson, ech, uh, the assist on that one, two nothing cap, or, or <laughs> I wish it was two nothing cap, two nothing yes, wild, yeah. <laughs> wild at that point. Uh, and yeah, it was another case of the caps chasing the game and it, it would pretty much downhill from there. Well, for the most part, um, second period, 628 in an old friend of ours, Marcus Johansson. Don't call him Johansson anymore. It's Johansson, his seventh. Uh, Zach Bogosian, the assist on that one, three nothing, wild. And then the Caps finally wake up uh, exactly ten minutes in the hat, the halfway point. Anthony Mantha, his thirteenth. Kuznetsov and Ferravati with the assist on that one. And uh, nice to see Kuzi get on the scoreboard. And uh, we're kind of hoping they were kind of hoping that um, putting him with Mantha was the spark that he needed, and that's looking to be the case somewhat um and then uh so we jumped to the third period um boy uh something about 90 90 or so seconds in so 137 again in the period um erickson Ech again with his 20th of the season felino and uh, brodine on the assist that makes it 4-1 that turns out to be the game winner for the wild uh joe hansen uh, about 10 minutes later, uh, makes it 5-1. Um, and then uh, Caps wake up uh, late, uh, as they did today. Uh, two quick goals. Uh, Oshi, his eighth. Carlson and Pacioretty on the assists at 17.03. And one minute, 21 seconds later. Uh, Mantha, again, his second of the game. Uh, 14th of the season. Malenstein and Dowd with the assists on that one at 18.24. But too little, too late. Um, on paper, it looked like a decent effort, um, but unfortunately, they didn't. They just didn't quite get it into gear. Thirty-three shots on goal total, fifty-fifty uh, at the faceoff dot, one for four on the power play. Um, you know, they, they just this is another one, another case of where it was a slow start and they just let it get away from them. Yep. And there's not not really a whole lot to say, other than that. Now that that I saw and um, yeah, for you goalie watchers out there. Yeah, I would say uh, at least two, maybe three of those goals. Um, probably Kemper would have wanted to have back. Um, but again, that's not why that's not the number one or even the only reason why they lost. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's figuring out why it takes so long for the caps to get their offense going. And th- that, I think that more than anything is what killed them this game and would, would kill them the next game too. Uh, and damn there, damn near kill them for good in this game today. But, you know, we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, no sense spending more time with that one. Let's get to the next one. Um, and we're really going to need to rip the bandaid off of that one, this one, because as bad as the Minnesota game was, this one was worse. Yeah, this one was this 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 one was really sucked (laughs) this one was so bad i had i was uh um about three beers in before the first 20 minutes and (laughs) yeah the second period thankfully was a blur um and you'll find out why that's a good thing in a second here um first 19 minutes or thereabouts of this game now you got to keep in mind the fact well two things they're playing probably one of the top three teams in the whole league right now. Um, team that just came off, well, not just, but recently came off a Stanley Cup win, Colorado. And they're playing uh, less than a back-to-back game within less than 24 hours in high altitude, as Mike Livingston pointed out. You know, and that, that definitely will put a drain on your body, for sure. Um, so... You got to give them that, but even so, this was pretty far from a, a well played game um, by the Caps. And what do I always say? I always say the worst thing you can do, two of the worst things you can do, is give up a goal early and or give up a shorthanded goal. Well, they didn't give up one early, but they gave up they gave up a shorthanded goal before the end of the period. And that's just as much of a kick in the nuts as anything else. Uh, Troy, did you happen to see this game? Did you, did you see any of it? See how that happened? 
I didn't watch any of that game. Uh, you're you're lucky because that that thing, I I felt like I was watching a horror movie. Um, because after that goal, um, you you just knew you just knew they were Colorado was going to turn on turn on the jets, pull out all the guns, the knives, whatever, and just hunt them down like wild dogs. I knew that was what was going to happen, and that happened. And it didn't even take the whole well. The, a good part of their team it took, uh, but mainly it was one guy, uh, Nathan McKinnon. And I, yeah. look, I will say it. I will say this right now, okay? Case for best in the league, best in the world, or at least best in the league, the hell with Connor McDavid, okay? Right. It's not him. <clears throat> it is Nathan McKinnon. 100%. I will, right now, right this minute, and probably for the rest of the year, it is him. Yep. It is him, and it is nobody else. He was on fire in that game. He was he was a beast this game. Ain't yeah. nothing was going to stop him. Nope. Um, so Kale McCarr is who got the uh, shorthanded goal. Um, and this was all right. So let me go ahead and break break this down. It, it took me about five or six times watching the replay uh, to figure this one out. So Kuzi actually starts the play. He's at center ice. He does this kind of a squib pass and Ovechkin kind of half ass goes to get it on the, on the, on the far wall. And I don't know what happens, but it, it ends up on Makar's stick and he skates it in and blasts it in from the point. Embarrassing. And it was all downhill from there. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so actually it was, okay. So it's Cogliano that recovered it, <laughs> slipped it to Makar who skated it in, but, even so, it was just, you knew it was going to be all kinds of bad from there. And uh, well, they, like you've said before, like you're, you're kind of, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Go to, you know, term has always been, you know, when they take the foot off the gas. Yeah. Um, I don't even think we had our foot on the gas at any point. It, it was like, they just well, came in so much stronger. I'm talking about obviously Colorado. Yeah, and they were there to play sixty minutes, to kick ass, to get points, to win the game, and do what you're supposed to do. And our team was like deer in the headlights. They looked off. They looked, you know, lines different and whatever. And <clears throat> I don't even know if they had their foot on the gas at all. To be honest, this game sucked. Well, I, I'll tell you this much: the first nineteen or so minutes. Before that play happened at center ice, the first 19 minutes of the game, the Caps were, I would say, about even, and they were playing with maximum effort, and they were at least keeping up. Um, now, they were, they were giving up some scoring chances, but they were at least, I would say, into the game and keeping up and had a chance. Yeah, I don't. But, I don't think so. But well, the, that, there's I, that, different different viewpoints, of course. That's the well. That's the way it looked to me. Uh huh. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying I'm not saying that would have translated into a win, right? But it was a lot better than how they played the rest of the game. True. And and then that score happens. That goal happens, and you can just see it was like somebody had had cut the gas line. Yeah. And just. The, everything just stopped. Now I'm I'm not going to say they quit, but yeah, like you said, deer in the headlights. They knew they were caught, and yeah, and and from there, Nathan McKinnon took over, uh, scores a natural hat trick, mm -hmm. um, assisted mostly by um, Miko Rantanen, uh, mm -hmm. who's also dangerous as fuck. Mm -hmm. Pardon the language, um, and and of course, uh, Kale McCarr. Uh, probably the best defenseman in the league right now. Well, no, no, probably that. No, that again is not probably is. Um, Caps late in the third uh, get get uh, some answers from Dylan Strome. He gets a pair. Um, his seventeenth and eighteenth. Um, Rantanen and McKinnon his fourth. Um, ramp it up to end it as a six-two win for the Avalanche and. Yeah, uh, I mean, all you have to do, again, as I like to say, all you have to do is is look at um, 
the shots on goal per period and how that diminished. Mm -hmm. 10 in the first, 9 in the second, 6 in the third. Downhill. 100%. Downhill and just, you know, again, not, not I'm not saying they quit, but it was like they kind of knew, all right, nothing we do is going to make – a whole lot of difference and you know the other team yeah they had they kept their foot on the gas and it it um it, it goes towards a problem i've discovered this team has i want to speak to that for about a minute um you need you need scoring talent up front for sure you need defensemen that can be physical and and move the puck, and you need good goaltending, good decent to good goaltending or reliable goaltending. Consistent goaltending. Yes, uh, you need yeah. that. But as much as you need all of that, something else you need is uh, an element of grit, what's called grit, toughness, uh, both mental toughness and physical toughness, and a, a willingness to do stuff like go in the corner and battle for a puck. Mm -hmm. uh, take a hit to make a pass, go in front of the net, take the punishment, block a shot, um, things like that. And that element is sorely lacking this year more than anything. Um, and I think that just as much of anything is contributing to their problems. Um, and it's one of those things where you can't, you can't teach it. You've either got it or you don't. And th there's no, there's no coach. There's no teacher. There's no wizard. There's no genie. There's no magical power going to give you that. You've either got players that have it or you don't. And right. the caps don't have very many players that have it. And well, I think that, also, sorry. No, no, no. Go, no, ahead. go ahead. Hmm? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> um, my big thing, just, uh, you know, you saying that and then it just kind of like sparked something in me and in us as fans talking about someone like uh, a, a Nathan McKinnon and just, you know, how much of a badass he is. Who's our badass? Honestly, like, yeah, who, who I, yeah, is who is the guy that when you like think of certain teams and you're like, oh, we're going to play you know, so-and-so, and it's like, man, they've got, you know, whatever. I, I don't even want to go on, on some of the names because I can't stand the players. But you know what I'm going to say. Like, when we go up against certain people, yeah. players stick out. Yeah, They're a badass, they're high score, or they, they play dirty, or whatever it is. The Caps don't seem to have that right now. No, like, no. That, yes, it's not, you know, no. Does that make sense? Like, does that like a, no, I it makes, it like makes a, perfect sense. It, it speaks to exactly what I'm, what I'm saying. And okay. on, uh, that was, that's kind of brave of you to say, because <laughs> um, we have, have a guy that, um, well, um, to some extent carries that aura about him, but unfortunately this year we haven't seen it a whole lot. Right. Um. And, and I don't think it's fair to, and if you're talking Ovechkin, which I'm assuming. Um, no, 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 no. Um, uh, well, him, but to uh, somebody else to a, another extent. And you're going to reach, want to reach through the computer and, and slap me, but. Don't tell me it's my Tommy. It's got to be. I mean, look, it. he still does what he does. He's still a factor. He's got he's got ten goals for crying out loud. He's going to the All Star game, uh -huh. and yeah. that, that was a league selection. He wasn't voted in. That was a league selection. So it's not like he doesn't have worth, right. but there's something he's not he's not the guy that oh god if I go anywhere near the net he's going to clean my clock. He's not the, he's not showing pain train Tom anymore. Yeah, no. and honestly, that's got to be because of that bubble helmet, which I support like a hundred percent. He needs to have that. Any player that has gone through broken nose or anything, I get that anything. he's got to have it, but it's turned him into <clears throat> cautious. It, yeah, he's he's too cautious, and I think I think it's compromising his vision. To be honest, because I'm seeing I, three four times this week alone, I, the pucks that he normally picks up and scoops up and gets to. He's not. He's missing by like that extra fraction of a second. Yeah. 
Well, I heard today on the game that he won't wear it next week. You mean at the All Star game or or yeah. after? Okay, at All Star. Yeah, I well so uh, the the yeah. All Star yeah the All Star game um it it it, it it's kind of slowed down it's kind of a watered down if we're being honest um they don't they don't they don't really hit each other they're not they're not going after each other they kind of you know keep it low key so I, I get that but um still if you think about it there's still an you know there's still uh, there he could get a puck to the face still. So that's in a sense, that's still kind of a risk, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good pickup, Troy. Uh, I, I didn't hear that, but uh, yeah, if he's, if he's willing to not wear a, a face shield, then, then that tells me that he's pretty close. This is probably the last game um, that he's going to wear it then, um, which is yeah. good. Uh, I hope so. But I mean, but again, like if you, <clears throat> I don't know if either one of you saw the, or heard about the interview after the the break happened, um, that it's just, the, it's just the gruesome. Cause you're, cause you know, your nose is broken, you know, it's swollen, you know, it's painful, but then they have to like re-break it, <laughs> set it. And he got the two black and he knows what he's going when he was going into that and like how miserable it is. So right. God, I would be so like, don't touch me. <laughs> don't even look at it. Don't even say no's. Don't even don't even think it. Cause I'd be like, oh my God, because there are gonna be players out there that could be dirty enough that just wanna want him off the ice regardless. Um so I think he has been cautious, but I also, Gil, totally agree with you. He's like, it's like looking through a fishbowl. Like he cannot see down, like right at his skates, you know, cause the way, and it's, it's like, God, how frustrating. And I think, you know, he'll, he'll do his fan base thing and, and do whatever is, so, you know, it's really just um, for fans, <laughs> the all-star thing. Like they're not going to go, they, no one wants to risk an injury. I agree. It's not what it used to be. And, and then, you know, skills, I think Gil, didn't you say Tommy's not even participating in that? I'm not sure that they're really, they're really limited. Um, I, I saw the interview with him to, in today's game where Mm -hmm. he did, he did a team competition uh, for for the team. And he, he actually, for the hardest shot, he participated in that. And he, he, he scored over a hundred and one of his shots. I don't know if he's, <laughs> he's going to be doing it on the regular skills competition, but yeah, I would have liked to have seen him do that, but yeah, they're, yeah. they're doing a whole different thing. And it, yeah, I mean, tch. but to get back to, to what we were saying before is like, you know, who is our Nathan McKinnon? Who is, you know, who is our, yeah, we, son? We, who we is our whatever. I agree with you on that. I, I, as much as I love Tommy and I will defend him, to a point, I don't think he is pain trained Tommy um, because of of you know this fishbowl helmet. Um, but aside from him, you know, it's certainly not Koozie. Co- he's not consistent. Mantha's yeah. come into his own, but we also dealt with a really really shitty first you know beginning of the season with him, where everyone was ready to to you know kick him out. Um, and other, you know, other goalies and, and other, you know, it's just like, oh, we just don't have that consistent player. So I think that's where we're at right now when it comes to like, are we rebuilding this team? Yeah, we're going to have to rebuild the team because who are going to be the players that the other teams are going to be like, Fuck, I don't want to go up against, you know, A, B, C, and D. I think Faravari is, is, a hell of a lot coming out more strong and willing to go up and, you know, drop the gloves and, and, you know, go after things more aggressively than he's been before, which I think is great. But then he's also been injured, you know, Strom's been good, but not consistent, you know? And it's like, so come on. Like, I really want that. I really want our team to be like, yeah, we've got these players and you should be afraid. We're yeah, just not and, there now. <laughs> and and on top on top of that, we we don't have that one guy that is a pain in the ass to play against. And we don't have a Marshawn. <laughs> no, no, we, we don't. And I think more than that, we need anything. But that that's why that's why I'm really high on 
Ryan Leonard. He looks like he's going to be that guy when he's so. ready. I'm, I'm well, hoping so, like too. when he's ready, you know, when he's ready, when but it's gonna be, going to be, <laughs> well, it, it's going to be at least a couple of years, I, yeah. I think, and maybe, maybe more, but I think when, when it's, when, when it's his time, he's going to be that guy or, or hopefully just one of them even. Right. So. Um, all right. Well, that was, uh, that was that game. So let's uh, go on to our focus game, which is the one that was just played against the Dallas stars. We'll try and uh, quickly get through the scoring. Um, you know, they were nine goals in this game. Um, okay. So, uh, I would say a good, again, a good 19 minutes. I think Craig like, uh, Lachlan, um, said this was a carbon copy of the start with the Colorado game. Um, Good, good, decent first period. Um, no, the Caps would fall behind, but uh, Caps would get the first goal. Anthony Mantha, his 15th. Uh, Kuznetsov, again, and Carlson on the assist on that one. Um, so, again, that may be the tonic that Kuzi needed. Uh, so, Caps out to the lead. Um, unfortunately, um, 64 seconds later, uh, when I'm 64 seconds later, uh, Wyatt Johnson, his 14th, Ropey Hintz, uh, and Miro Hiskinen uh, on the assist on that one ties the game. Um, yeah, so the lead lasted uh, literally about a minute. Um, so, uh, yeah, kind of kind of the uh, same length as uh, how eight-track tapes were a thing uh, for about a minute. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, people's love for Justin Bieber lasted for about a minute. Um, what else lasted for about a minute? I don't know. Um, I'm probably opening myself up for other things, but just to illustrate that point. Um, and oh, then, wow. well, and then uh, bang, bang. Um, let's see, 23. Let's see, 20. Yeah, 23 seconds. 23 seconds later, um, stars get another goal. Thomas Harley, remember that name, his 11th, uh, Jamie Ben, Sam Steele on the assist and that one caps or caps. Well, caps fall behind uh, at 1107. Um, to the stars. But even then, like Jamie Ben, I mean, even even listening to to Joe B and Locker, they're they're had him, Pavelski, um, like I uh, say, like on not on a pedestal. I won't say that because they don't do that. But I do find that they are able to respectfully choose, you know, uh, opponent players and, and, and give them praise when it's due. Um, but man, like when you look at the stars lineup and you've, you've got, you know, at least those three players just off the top of your head, that's who, who, you know, when you're in the locker and being like, shit, this is who we're going up against. Okay. I, I want to see that fire when people think shit, we're going up against the caps because of you know fill in the blank because and, they're consistently doing well yeah and i'll be honest I, I was very far from optimistic on this game I'll, all i wanted to see was something of a of a good effort uh, uh, some yeah. a, some attempt to keep up with them yep. um and even if they lost if, if they can say they put out an honest effort and tried to keep up with you know a team with a lot more firepower you know like with uh, the colorado game um you know they just don't have the pieces yet. That's, that's fine. But if, if the coaching and the effort between those two elements, you know, allows them to give them a chance to succeed, that's really all we need to, you know, we're looking for this mm -hmm. year True. at this stage of the plan. Um, and as it turned out, it was one of those games where that came to be. Um, but, you know, even so they fell behind, um, in the uh, in, in by the end of the first, um, but I will say it did not look like they were really chasing the game until they fell behind again. So we'll get to that here. Um, Six twenty four in the second. Uh, Rasmus Sandin with a gorgeous point shot um, with uh, traffic in front. I believe it was um, um, Malenstein who was uh, setting the screen in front. But Sandine with his first of the year, Obe Kubel and Van Riemsdyk on the assist. So it ties it up at 2-2 two -two at 6-24 in the second. Uh, Mason Marchment, uh, Caps give up a power play. He scores his 16th. Uh, Sagan and Haskinen on the assist on that one. So stars go up 3-2. Um, 
So the Caps were behind a good chunk of this period, but they didn't it again. It didn't feel like even though they weren't putting out a whole lot of shots, didn't feel like they were chasing the game. And, you know, that's that's what that's what you want to look for. The the effort, the consistency that, you know, that, OK, you're you're going to get these shots on us, but we're going to do our job and keep you to the outside and clear the rebounds. That's what is to be looked for. That's what you need to look for. And it, it was there um, enough. Um, unfortunately, third period, uh, Matt Duchesne, his 17th. Um, and this was this was the goal I thought was going to be the backbreaker. Yeah, this one. Um, well, let's let's call up the replay on that. See, see what could have been done better. Um, yeah, so Caps had a man in front. Oh, that's that's pretty bad. Um Sorry, the app has given me fits as usual. Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, I, all right. I remember this goal. Okay, so what really started this play? Ovi had a shot on goal. Okay, it goes off of the Dallas goalie. Um, I'm blanking on his name, Jake. Hey, Something with uh, an O. O O Osterreicher. Um, no, that's the Swedish prison. Oh crap. <laughs> Oh, gee. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. It's all good. Uh, Ottinger. Yeah. Uh, Ottinger. Uh, so it, it bounces off of his blocker. All right. Real hard shot. The The rebound goes all the way out of the zone into center ice. Okay. And it gets picked up by the stars. And in particular... Uh, Sag- Sagan starts it, and then uh, he gets it over to Haskinen, uh, who finds Marchment breaking for the zone. And then Dylan Strom, I don't know what happened to him, but um, the, the, the computer-generated ad, um, now I'm being facetious, of course, uh, but the computer-generated ad at the, the high part of the offensive zone, he trips over that and doesn't get to Marchment. Marchment has an easy, pretty much a layup. For, for that goal or Duchesne rather um sorry I'm getting my goals mixed up so yeah, Sagan did start the play Marchment was actually the one that got it to Duchesne and Duchesne had the had the layup uh over Lindgren's shoulder uh to to get the goal um and I thought that was the backbreaker because that was that, that was a busted play and you know like I was saying in the chat room what do you want Ovi to do not shoot in that per- particular situation you want him to not shoot not create a scoring chance just stand there with the puck of course he's got to shoot but all right um so all seemed lost um caps were doing enough to keep it respectful until um they got a power play late and i want to see i'm going to jump to the summary i want to see what that penalty actually was um, okay, is uh, okay. So Sam Steele tripped Martin Ferravari. That's the penalty that was called. All right, and Caps go on the power play, and they're they're really they're really putting on the effort because something about I think it was Coach Carberry that said, "Hey, look, this is the last game before the All Star break. Let's empty the tank here. We got nothing to save ourselves for." Let's put it all out in the ice. And they did. The last, I want to say, last four minutes of the game, they really did. They ramped it up. Okay. I wish I had a shot count for that whole period, that that just those few minutes, but they were really going after. They flooded the crease and everything. They did but everything. why not do that the all freaking 60 minutes? Your guess is as good as mine, and Al, Al Koken pretty record. much the same thing at, at the post game. Yeah, yeah, we we've been saying it. He's been saying it. A lot of people have been saying it. Yeah, they need to buy in and figure out that that's how they're going to score, because they're not a team that's going to get that pretty pretty goal anymore. It's not going to happen like that anymore. But anyway, uh, so they get the power play. They flood the crease, and um, well, ironically enough, on the next goal that was scored, uh, it was Ovechkin from just about his spot on the power play, uh, Kuznetsov and Oshi on the assist, but they had traffic in front, go figure, again, just like Sandine's goal. And uh, it was a great thing to see. And then, they, so then they pulled Lindgren, six on five attack. 
and they pinned Dallas in their own zone the last minute. And you know what the last minute means? Last minute of any period means McNugget. magical, magical, magical McNugget, McNugget minutes. Oh, sorry, my you dogs said are it. going. You out. said it, Bella. You said it. it. Is, yeah. oh my God, I'm like, who is making deliveries this late to have my dogs go crazy every time I'm on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. they, they they flood so they flood the crease they storm the box and they're shooting away you know ovechkin's throwing it at the net mantha's got his face and got his button in in ottinger's face and creating havoc and then dylan strome sweeps the puck towards the net just underneath ottinger's pad and in until we hear a whistle and yeah, the balloons deflated and everybody's like, yeah, this is this is not going to count. And then they go to review. And the zebras all huddle. And they talk it over. And after about five minutes, well, it seemed like 55, but it could have been, could, might as well have been 55 minutes. But after a few minutes, uh, the referee goes out and said, oh. Uh, it was continuous motion. Um, and, um, okay. Um, continuous motion. I mean, you can take that a number of ways. Um, that could be that. That actually sounds like, if I'm not being too bold here, that sounds like a really bad softcore porn movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but yeah, I'll go with. I'll. I'll go. Come well, on. You know, I mean, does it right. or what? It does. Continuous it motion, does. yes. Yeah, but that, that was the excuse, and I'm doing the my finger air quotes that nobody can see, but yeah, that was the excuse that they said, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to overturn the call on the end because I was watching for the ref to point at the goal. And Mrs. Yeah. Blue Liner, Mrs. Blue Liner had just gotten home from work. She sat down. She was right next to me. She got all excited that they scored. I said, watch the ref, watch the ref, and he never once pointed at the goal, which means that the call on the ice was no goal. So evidently they saw enough to overturn it. Um, but since it was a goal that happened in the magical, magical McNugget McNugget in it, guess who had to intervene? Frickin' Toronto. Our buddies in Toronto. So they reviewed it. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go get some popcorn, a hot dog, maybe some soda. This is going to take a while. Um, it, uh, so uh, speaking of things that take about a minute, this this also took about a minute. Um, that I guess that could also be another type of movie, but I'm not going to get into that. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Um, so Toronto reviews it, and referee comes back out. It's a good goal. And I swear to you, I might need to see the dentist because my jaw hit the floor. Yeah. I could yeah. not. I did, I did not see that coming. I really thought they were to go against us because I was like, "Okay, wait a second. We've got we've got this one call. Frickin' Toronto is always against the Caps. <laughs> it never goes in our favor." Um, but it did, and I was like, "Holy shit! This is so great!" And then, and then it wasn't. <laughs> Troy, did you see any of that? Did Did you happen to catch th that? Th when that all happened, what what were you I, thinking? I didn't watch the game. I was listening to um, what's his John Walton. Oh, oh okay. Him. So you caught you caught it on the radio. Okay, so yeah, that well, J John's pretty good. John's pretty good at painting the picture, you know, yeah. with with his voice. Yeah. So what I mean, what what were you feeling when when he was talking about it? What were you What were you feeling? <laughs> I was feeling great. Did it well? Did it sound like? Did it sound like he was like, okay, well, you know, we we've been through this before. Are they going to call it back? It doesn't look good. It do, it looks bad. Yeah. <laughs> but when but when the, he he said he said they called it, um, obviously pr pretty excited, huh? Yeah. 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 I I I kind of wish I kind of wish. Um, there was a way to to listen to the radio call and and watch it at the same time because I don't want to you know I, I mean, Joe being Locker that's you know best in the game is in my eyes but I wish there was a way to kind of do it 
you know, both ways, but yeah, that, that, that would have been a thing of beauty to, to listen. I'm sure, I'm sure John got excited when, when it, it got in their favor and they, they called it for the caps for once. Cause of course, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Toronto's been our buddies. All right. Yeah. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, amazingly enough, either way, however you want to look at it, um, Strom, 17 seconds, appropriately enough, into the last minute of the game of regulation, ties it his 19th of the year. Uh, Ovechkin's 22nd assist of the year, by the way. Um, I think he's right behind Carlson uh, for the team lead, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Carlson, uh, Carlson, Carlson has has 25. Yeah, he has 25 after this game. Yeah, uh, good good pick up there, Troy. He had, yeah, he's got 25 after this game. And uh, so, yeah, I think Ovechkin actually ha- now has the second most behind him. Um, so, again, he's contributing. In any case, um, we go to overtime. And, I mean, I'm happy with it, but I'm happy with the effort, even though, you know, all they, all they end up with is the loser point. But 327 in, Thomas Harley, who... Uh, got a goal earlier and actually got the overtime winner in their last game against the the yucks uh, excuse me ducks um <clears throat> puts it away um unfortunately uh for the caps now again i i don't want to i don't want to get into another goalie debate but uh the first four goals that dallas scored i'm more than willing to give charlie lindgren a pass on um especially since the 30 saves that he did make, uh, some of them were pretty spectacular. But this one, this last one, I really think he should have had it. Agreed. Yeah. I'm sorry. I really think he should have had it. And the, nobody said so in in the broadcast, but I really think he should have had it because, I mean, yeah, it, it came as a result of a busted play. You know, they had they had two guys back. They had coverage. And, you know, Harley aims for high glove side and which is usually Charlie's strength. He's he's good with his glove. And he missed it. And I, you know, I, I got to put him to task if we're going to be fair. OK, what what's good for the goose is, is good for the gander and all that. You know. I, I know I'm showing my age again, but. We got to be fair. You're going to scrutinize one goalie. You got to do it to them both, and he should have had that. He should have. He very, he very much should have. Now, now so uh, question for you, uh, Troy. Um, did did I, I don't know how I don't know how far you were listening to John, but did he did he say anything about that or no no. What 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 was he what was he saying when when it was scored what 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 was he talking about after the game? I don't, again, I, 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 if you missed it, I don't I don't you know I'm sorry, but uh, I, what what was he saying about it? He was saying we played good against Dallas. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. Um, did he say anything else? No. No, it was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I would agree. Al, Dallas was pretty um, pretty tough, and I, I, like I said, it was it was a loss. I had it down for a loss, which it ended up being. Um. So um, yeah, I mean, but you hate to lose this way, where you know. Charlie does a great job right up until the very last. You really hate to lose this way, but I mean, I'll take I'll take an overtime loss. Um, but yeah, it's it's not. It, I don't know. I I I'm, I'm this this kind of thing leaves me at a loss sometimes because. I loved I loved how they came back. It was it was exciting. You're thinking the possibility of a win. They were actually a minute and a half well from the shootout and 
I mean, yeah, I hate the shootout, but I mean, the, the shootout is to me a roll of the dice, which is part of the reason why I hate it so much. So it's, I mean, you still got a chance to win there, but I, I don't know. I, I don't want to take Charlie to task, but that, that's the kind of thing I, you know, and I, I kind of think that it's, it's going to haunt him a little bit. Um, letting something like that in so late in the game that, that, that costs them that, that extra point. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's, it, it's going to bother him. And I, it, it, but that may actually be a good thing. And I'll explain why it's because he's got, he's got a fire in him. He's got a competitive fire in him. That's, it's like, Hey, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to take this. I'm going to learn from it. I'm not going to let it happen again. Um, and yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It, it, it can be a good thing. I think, I think he can turn it around, but you know, obvious to say he's, he is the de facto number one, you know, nobody, nobody actually said it, but he's going to get, he's still going to get the majority of the games. I don't think, I don't think even with this happening, I don't, you know, the bad week that was, I don't think he's given up the net. It's still his net. Um, as far as I'm concerned anyway. So, you know, I, it, it ended badly. It started badly, but all in all, I mean, actually the whole team, it, it kind of ended on a high. So um, as long as they can carry this over from the all star break into their next set of games that, you know, if they, they kick ass and storm the net and they, they do what they can to just out of sheer effort, score the goals. You know, and that that that's all they need. That's all they need to do. So with that, that was the week that was. Um, so before we get into our last segment, uh, real quick previews of coming attractions. Um, there are none. Um, next week is uh, uh, El Blanco. No wash, no uh, games at all in the National Hockey League all the way from. Um, well, not for the Caps anyway, all the way from uh, January 28th, tomorrow, all the way through the first few days of February. Uh, Caps actually do not play again until February 6th, back at home against the Montreal Canadiens. That's puck drop of, at 7 o'clock, February 6th. Then they go on a quick road trip uh, down to Florida on Thursday night, 7 o'clock puck drop against the Panthers. Uh, then, then it's a Saturday afternoon game, uh, 3.30 puck drop there against the Boston Bruins uh, up there at the Garden. Um, and then um, I don't know how it's going to shake out, but uh, Super Bowl Sunday is right after that. Uh, they play oh. the Canucks. They, yeah, they, they play the Canucks uh, at home at 1.30, 1.30 puck drop. I don't know if we're going to include that in the coverage or not. I'm going to figure that out, but. Um, those are the next four games for the Caps, and uh, so we'll see how that plays out. A um, couple winnable games there, but uh, at least one or two tough opponents as well. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, I, I think they'll they'll keep it up. I'm hoping they keep up the effort. So we'll uh, we got that to look forward to um, at the very least. All right. So that was the week that was on the ice. Now. Um, so uh, we do have uh, a guest on this week, and uh, as we mentioned, uh, he's with uh, he's an athlete with Special Olympics, which is, uh, uh, I'm being honest, one of uh, the most awesome organizations, uh, charities out there. Um, I mean, Special Olympics, it's, it's self-explanatory. Um, uh, athletes with disabilities, um, it's, it's their Olympics, and uh, uh, mental and physical, and um, you know, you, 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 you can't have lived and seen the commercials and the, you know, the, uh, the tributes and uh, what, what these athletes can do. And they are true athletes. I don't care what anybody says. They are true athletes. They put out all the effort, all the blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to be good at what they do. I, you know, I, I don't care where you're coming from. I don't care, you know, what level you participated in these are athletes every one of them and again i salute them and i'm i'm proud and happy to have one of them on with us um so troy uh so first of all um can you tell me um you don't have to be exact 
but uh, when you got start, when uh, and and uh, well, more importantly, how you got started with them. I I started in high school. And and so did did uh, one of your high school uh, coaches in high school or one of your teachers kind of recruit you and say, hey, you know what, you you really ought to try this. Yeah, one of my teachers I had was the bowling is well, I don't know if she still is, but she was the bowling coach, and she asked me to do it. Cool, and it was, and uh, so is it. Um, I, 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 I know, I know, uh, there's, the, there's special Olympics on the local level and, and on a more worldwide level too. So were you kind of just, uh, was, was it a Virginia state thing or, or in, in, in your city or, or how, how did that part work? It's, it's like local, like you were just saying. Okay. Very cool. And, uh, so you started in high school and you've been doing it ever since. Yeah. This is and, my 25th year of it. Wow. And okay, so That's so amazing. I, yeah, that that is. That is. So so again, 25 years of athletic competition. I can't think of anything I've done for half that long that was worth anything. Okay? Right. So <laughs> um <clears throat> now okay, so I got I I hate to jump to this um, but it's it, the, 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 the results guy in me is like, I got to know, okay. So how many, how many gold medals have you won? Six of them. And, and have they all been in bowling or, uh, some of the, the other stuff that you do? I've won two in bowling, two in basketball and two in volley and softball. It's incredible. Two, two in bowling, two in softball. And two in volleyball. Yeah. See, I I don't think I I used to volleyball was one of the things when I when I was in high school. Volleyball was one of the things I hated doing because right. uh, I wasn't exactly the tallest guy and um or the fastest guy and uh, yeah. Uh, now, but I but I could I, was, I could hit the ball I could hit the ball from the back of the court I could serve it and that's about all I could do. Yeah, now in April, I'll start training for my seventh in bowling. When are the Special Olympics? They're year round. I know, but like when, when do they, so are there different sports? Like, is there a, a spring or a summer and then winter sports at a different time? Or is it just, do they we're do doing, it all at once? We're doing basketball right now. Oh, okay. And then... Summer we have we have one competition and then we're on break. Okay, okay. Yeah, see, basketball is my weakness. <laughs> Not so good. Not so yeah. good. Even at five nine, you would think I maybe had some kind of potential, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, ba- basketball I can kind of sort of shoot, but uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not pretty. I, with me. I'm not. Uh, I'm not any re- fast break kind of guy. Right. Sorry, 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 Troy. What were, you, what were you gonna say? I'm good at shooting and rebounding the ball. How's good for you? That's that's very cool. So that that, so, that that's really yeah. That that you. I mean, you you pretty much got it down. If you can do do those two things, um, right? In basketball. Hey, you should probably teach the Wizards a thing or two this year. <laughs> good lord. Oh boy. Yeah. I Painful. think they uh, won today. Um, you know what? You might be right. Let me let me check because I I was I was keeping an eye on them. Um, yeah, you're right. They won today. They, um, well, you know they they beat the worst team in the league, but still a win is a win. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll take it. Yeah, we'll we'll take it. Yeah, just like just like we'll take the loser point in this game. Right. Uh, now, now, Troy, you were saying you were training um, for uh, another round of bowling. Uh, how how long? How often? I mean, what can you talk about? What what goes in that? How many hours? What what do you do for that? How many hours you put in stuff like that? Basically, I train for 
they give us two hours to train and then we relax. So do you do you have a coach that comes out and helps you or do you, or you just pretty much on your own? We practice at a local bowling alley. Very cool. And is that where uh so do they also have have the actual uh competition there as well at, at uh, the local? The competition is actually in Richmond. Oh nice. That's really cool. That yeah, that well that yeah, that's big it, time. That that's that's uh, that sounds like a whole state thing if it's, if right. it's there. Try what are the is. dates for that one? Do you know? Um not right now, but I'll I can let y'all know. Yeah, please do. Yeah, definitely. And we'll like to follow follow we'll, you we'll, in that for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll say something. We'll definitely say something about it and uh and yeah, we'll let everybody know, especially uh everybody who's gonna be in the area, uh, that that they can that they can catch that or follow that and uh yeah, and, and uh, either way, let us know how you do. Oh, I'm going for my seventh gold. I gotta get it this year. Yeah, yeah. You do. See? Lucky seven. See what I mean? True seven. true athlete. True athlete. Never 100%. satisfied. Never <laughs> satisfied. Always gotta get one more. <laughs> right. Heck yeah. Who do you be like the next Michael Phelps? <laughs> who do y'all think's gonna win tomorrow? Um uh, we all know I'm pulling for the Niners. That's all that matters. Well, you talk. We talking football, or you know, we're talking football. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Just, just wanted to make sure. Well, okay. So I'm I'm a I'm a Ravens guy, uh, but yeah. but I love I love the Niners too. They've been they've been my they've been my uh, uh, lack for lack of a better term girlfriend team for a while. <laughs> <clears throat> um. <laughs> but I've always been a Ravens guy, so hoping for the Ravens, and uh, I th I think the Niners will pull it out uh, in the NFC side. So uh, yeah. fortunately or unfortunately, I think the Niners and the Ravens are on a collision course for the Super Bowl. And what about you, Troy? Who are you pulling for? I'm going 49ers in Baltimore. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's how it's going to shake out. I don't know. I have to say, even as as a diehard lifelong Niners fan uh, to lose to a, a team like Detroit and their whole story. I'm okay with, there's not a whole lot of animosity there as if it had been, um, you know, Dallas or something. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I think, you know, you can't ever count out the Chiefs because pa Patrick Mahomes is a pretty badass player. But yeah. also I think that, but I think that it's going to be a fantastic game to see Mahomes and Jackson go up, you know, go toe to toe oh, yeah. as, as oh, TVs yeah. because like, oh my God, the talent and the skill on those two quarterbacks is, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> and, and I've got to say, like, I've got, I have a lot of respect for Lamar Jackson. I just don't care for Baltimore, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. Um, I get it. And I have no alliance with the Chiefs, obviously. Um, but I do think it's going to finally be like for people who are huge football fans like myself, a damn good game to watch as well. The, the Lions Niners game. Yeah. Well, I was looking at uh injury report. Kansas City's going to be without a lot of people. Really? Mm. Oh, yeah. God, I didn't know. Okay. Hmm. That's going to make things in interesting. Yeah. Debo, Debo Samuel is playing tomorrow night. Yes. Yes. So he was kind of 50% all week and then, and they, they cleared him and he will be in tomorrow. Um, let's just hope that they kind of told the media that, you know, he was, uh, worse off than he was because who knows I, we can't lose him but you know like any other sport one player goes down the next one's got to step up and play just as hard right I yeah. hope you got in because uh, the commanders need a new coach and we might be getting Lions offense coordinator well, yeah 
Yeah, that that that's the word. Okay. Uh, I, uh, ben Johnson. Um, yeah. Is the guy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they cool. definitely need they definitely need um, um, some, some new leadership, some new leadership yeah. uh, for, for sure. Um, I don't think they're that far off. Uh, like I said, I think they just need somebody, uh, somebody else uh, up at the top, yeah. you know, putting the pieces yeah. together and calling the plays. Uh, um, but <clears throat> yeah, uh, we'll we'll see how that shakes out. But now, now that uh, you know the new ownership <clears throat> has finally got it, got it, you know, a chance to take over. <clears throat> pardon me. Um, uh, we'll we'll see what they can do. Uh, hopefully, they bring a little pride and respect back to uh, back to that franchise because they, they really yeah. need it. We do. All right. Uh, okay. So we're coming to the end of uh, of uh, our uh, our time here. Troy, did you? Uh, well, before I ask, uh, uh, Troy, it's it's been a great pleasure having you on. Loved having you on. Uh, did a great job uh, talking about stuff um, and and the Olympics, especially. Um, is there anything else um, that uh, you wanted to mention that uh, you wanted to go over with us? Anything? No, let's go Caps and the uh, 49ers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And Ravens. <laughs> yeah. No. Actually, uh, I'm actually playing Madden right now. <laughs> nice. There you go. All right. Uh, okay, so I think there's a good spot to wrap it up. Um. So, um... Yeah, I, I think uh, those those next few games, as much make or break as this was, if the Caps can win two of those games, I think they'll still be on uh, some sort of trajectory to at least improve. So we'll see how they do. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, two of those games definitely are, are winnable. And I think this break is going to do them some good, unlike in years past. So, yeah. um, all right. So for... Troy Evans and the mermaid Anna Knox. Um, I am the blue liner on point and I'm signing off for um, a week. And um, I just going to say uh, before we get to the end here, probably going to go ahead and take next week off because like I said, I am not going to pay the all-star game, not a whole lot of mind. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to, we're going to uh, take a one week break along with the rest of the league. And thanks for keeping up with us. Uh, so I'm going to remind you oh. that I once traveled through Minnesota, the great state of Minnesota, and um, I was there I was at a restaurant, and I tried to order a large Diet Coke, a large Diet Coke. They wouldn't give me one, though, because in the state of 10,000 lakes, they only had mini sodas. <laughs> Oh. Hallelujah and let's go caps. Go caps. Go caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcast, the Podbean app, BlueLiner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Power Play Point Podcast. Thanks for listening.